Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Since my uh, last review I just did, which is uh, Carrie, the 1976 film, that's uh, Stephen King's first film adaptation, not to mention his first novel, I decided to review another Stephen King adaptation, this time a miniseries that aired on ABC back on November 18, 1990, and part two had aired on November 20th to join in. And that is Stephen King's It. Yes, with Pennywise the Dancing Clown played fantastically by Tim Curry. Yes, that's right, they float. And if you're down here with me, you'll float too. <laughs> yeah. I love this performance, and this is a very nice slipcover that they put out just recently, even though the Blu-ray just came out two years ago by Warner Brothers, which this time, um, it is in HD, but it's also in full frame, exactly how it originally aired, but it's still missing some frames on, on the left and right, so that's okay. So it's a bit cropped here and there, and on the back... You can see uh, some of the remaining cast from the miniseries. Yeah, you can see John Ritter, Harry Anderson, and Richard Thomas. Yeah, of course, both of which they just recently passed away. Well, Harry Anderson passed away this year. He's been best known for, for playing Judge Harry on Night Court. And John Ritter passed away in 2003. So... And he was from Freeze Company. Yeah, so, sad though, because, you know, those are my favorites. It also has the commentary included um, directly from the 2002 uh, widescreen DVD release. Yes, they've actually put this in widescreen, but that aspect ratio of 1 by 77. But it actually has uh, more details on the left and right than the top and bottom. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's no other features, so it's basically bare bones, but what can you do? The only thing that's very disappointing about this release, just like the DVD, is that, yes, this is the edited version. This is not the one that originally broadcast on ABC. Yeah, so they're missing five minutes of of deleted footage which at this point on which this is going to be a spoiler part one was shortened at the end that has uh, the death scene of of Stan yeah one of the uh, the members of the losers club also known as lucky number seven that was played by Richard Messer yeah he committed suicide in the bathtub and yeah using some razor blades and just slit his his wrist and he even wrote uh, the word it's in blood at the bathtub tile and his and his wife uh, was shocked and was screaming yeah I mean she even throw down the the beer and and the glass so yeah that that was very heartbreaking and shocking and then the part two actually shows uh, the beginning where we see Tim Reed who's narrating inside the library. Uh, they, they even show like scenes of what happened in part one until they go directly to uh, to the scene where Bill, who's played by Richard Thomas, uh, checks in to a local hotel to stay in and in Derry, Maine until he went straight to the graveyard at the cemetery where he found the grave of Georgie. So that was shortened. I couldn't believe they did that. That that, that was not fair. Um, anyway, the slipcover, as you can see, is definitely like the DVD release as you saw. Yeah, you see Pennywise the Clown with those uh, <laughs> those uh, very uh, creepy, monstrous uh, uh, fingers that that's appearing. Yeah, which sharp nails and then you can see the cast right here 
Yes, you got uh, Harry Anderson, Dennis Christopher, uh, Richard Masur, Annette O'Toole, uh, Tim Reed, uh, John Ritter, and Richard Thomas. They're all together on this cover art. And you can see the back right here. Pennywise the Clown right there, played by Tim Curry. And yep, so on and so forth here. <laughs> And just one Blu-ray in red. Actually matches very well too uh, with this set. Uh, so yes, the original broadcast would have been 192 minutes. So this is 187, but what can you do? Um, but you also have uh, some other cast members joining in uh, when they show them at in flashbacks of, of how they were when they were kids. You know, you had Jonathan Brandis, Seth Green, uh, Emily Perkins, uh, and uh, many others that follow. Even They even got Olivia Hussey playing the, uh, Bill's wife. Yeah, Olivia Hussey from Black Christmas and uh, Romeo and Juliet come to mind. So you got a great cast right here. Because this movie was shot in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, Canada, and they also uh, shot some of the scenes in in other cities like New York, uh, Indiana, Beverly Hills, all come to mind. So, but put together though, this is one big event that they actually had to offer, and this was of course the first uh, miniseries uh, since. Salem's Lot that was directed by the late great Toby Hooper and I know originally uh, George A. Romero was going to do this and it was going to be a four part miniseries but they decided to cut it down to two and they gave it to uh, Tommy Lee Wallace the same director who gave us uh, and he also is a writer too he gave us Halloween Free Seasons of the Witch which got critically panned by critics but it eventually became a cult classic among many others, especially you know fans of Halloween. But that's okay. Um, it, it plays out as an apology, and I really enjoy that. So, Tom Lee Wallace uh, did a fine job with this, and he was the one who cast Tim Curry for the part, whereas um, George R. Romero was going to cast either Roddy McDowell or Michael McDowell as Pennywise. So Tim Curry is the right choice. And there's no other. There is a film adaptation from 2017, last year. Uh, I've seen the film adaptation, and I'll say this though: it's fine, but it's overrated. I mean, I just didn't like the portrayal of Pennywise the Clown, that's played by Bill Skarsgård, and there's too many jump scares. Not not very good CGI effects that they chose, but it still had a few practical effects, but not too many, sadly. And it did have the story straight, but it's still not as accurate as it could be. And I know neither is the miniseries. I mean, if you read the book, I love the book too. So even so, I mean, I still enjoy the miniseries even more than ever. So I guess maybe the difference is, is that maybe I have different taste. So that's always a chance uh, worth taking. I mean, every time I think of Pennywise the Clown, I think of Tim Curry's performance. That's why. So I, I just couldn't get into Bill Skarsgård, but uh, even if I try. <laughs> but I, I understand people don't like this, but it's fine. Everybody has their own opinions, and I'll take it. Uh, so anyway, let, let's get to the review. It stars Tim Curry uh, with Florence Patterson along with Richard Thomas, Jonathan Brandis, uh, John Ritter, Brandon Crane, Annette O'Toole, Emily Perkins, Harry Anderson, Seth Green, Dennis Christopher, Adam Ferrazzi, Tim Reed, Marlon Taylor, Richard Metzer, Ben Heller, Michael Cole, Gabe 
Krautz and Chris Eastman. No, Chris Eastman, Olivia Hussey, Sheila Moore, Michael Ryan, Frank C. Turner, Kathleen Hicks, Tony Dakota, Stephen Hilton, and Susan Ashley. Yeah, it's written by Lawrence D. Cohen. Yes, the same writer who also did Carrie. Uh, that's also based on Stephen King's novel, of course. And he did a very good job with this, too. But uh, sadly, he also went to do uh, the Tommy Knockers miniseries, also by Stephen King. Yeah. Well, go figure. Even this is better than the Tommy Knockers, in my opinion. And it's directed by Tom Lee Wallace, who also wrote uh, Part 2 to join in, just to fill in with Lawrence D. Cohen. So. The miniseries begins in the present time of Derry, Maine in 1990. We meet Mike, who's a librarian, who's actually investigating the murder of a young girl who's riding on a bike, which she actually spotted... Pennywise the Dancing Clown, that's played by Tim Curry, because he was the one responsible for the death of the little girl. Anyway, all the authorities came by, and they and suddenly Mike spotted an old photograph of Georgie, the younger brother of Bill, who happens to be played by Richard Thomas, but as a kid he was played by Jonathan Brandis. Anyway, uh, Pennywise just goes around attacking and killing several children around in Derry, Maine. So this is where he starts contacting the entire club, known as simply the Losers Club. Yeah, with uh, Bill joining in. Which, uh, he was already uh, doing a, a movie set uh, with his wife, uh, Audra, who's played by Olivia Hussey. And then uh, he later uh, called um, Ben, who's played by John Ritter. And as a kid, Brendan Crane. Then um, Beverly Marsh, who's played by Annette O'Toole, with Emily Perkins uh, when she was young. Uh, Richie, played by Harry Anderson, uh, with Seth Green playing his younger self. Uh, Eddie, played by Dennis Christopher, with Adam uh, Ferwalze as his younger self. Of course, uh, and Richard Messer as Stan, with his younger self, played by Ben Heller. He also has his younger self, too, who's played by uh, Marlon Taylor. <laughs> so, yes, that's where we begin to, to see what's going on here. So, it flashes back to 1960, and this is where Georgie, who's played by Tony Dakota, was just playing in the streets uh, with uh, a paper sailboat you know, that, that was actually made by his older brother, Bill who actually stutters a lot. So he goes all the way down to the storm drain and that's where he spotted Pennywise the Clown. And yeah, this is where <laughs> he had this uh, particular line right here. Hiya, Georgie! Are you going to say hello? Oh, come on, Buckle! Don't you want a balloon? And Georgie just says, I'm not supposed to take stuff from strangers. My dad says so. And Pennywise just continues saying, Very wise of your dad, Georgie. Very wise indeed. I, Georgie, am Pennywise the Dancing Clown. You are Georgie. So now we know each other, correct? Georgie says, I guess so. I gotta go. Pennywise says, Go without this? Yeah, the paper boat. <laughs> and Georgia says, My boat! 
Exactly. Go on, kiddo. Take it. Oh, you want it, don't you, Georgie? Well, of course you do. And there's cotton candy and rides and all sorts of surprises down here. And balloons, too. All colors. Do they float? Oh, yes. They float, Georgie. They float. And when you're down here with me, you'll float, too. You'll float, too. And then he grabs uh, Georgie's arm and, and just drags him all the way down. Yeah, I know in the novel, he actually rips off his arm and kills him by dr dropping him all the way down into the storm drain. And that's how he died. Yeah, very sad. So after that, they went to her funeral for Georgie's death. And then suddenly uh, afterwards, uh, Bill decided to go straight into Georgie's room. He grabs up a paper scrapbook where it has all these pictures around until suddenly the book uh, moves incredibly fast and that's where we spot the, the photograph of Georgie. It actually moves too. It, I mean you see Georgie wink through the picture and then all the blood starts to flow all the way straight down and and he was very shocked. Then his parents uh, spotted him and telling him not to go back to his room again. And they put back the, the book. Yeah, I know I know the parents and everyone else uh, didn't actually notice too much, although they did notice the blood. Um, but they didn't notice that the that there's something going wrong inside the book. So that's was crazy. So months later Bill, along with his best friend, Eddie, who has asthma, had later uh, befriended an overweight new kid named Ben Hanscom. They later joined in with a beautiful girl named Beverly Marsh, who actually lives with her abusive father, played by Frank C. Turner. And this is where she begins to spot uh, the blood that was coming directly from the sinkhole all the way straight to a balloon. You know, this was where she starts to hear some voices going straight from it. And, and then she had to clean all that blood. Anyway, she was introduced along with Ben with Bill and Eddie's other friends, uh, Richie and a Jewish Boy Scout, Stan, who was played by Ben Heller. So they begin to know each other you know, throughout the, the course of school, Ben suddenly developed feelings for Beverly. You know, he even wrote uh, a poem for her, only discovered that she actually had feelings for Bill. But now they're being bullied by a game led by Henry Bowers, who's played by Jared Blancard. But they all soon encountered Pennywise the Clown, just when the the group had later joined in with Mike Hanlon, who was played by Marlon Taylor. Yeah, he was an African American who's a new kid in town that's also being bullied by Bowers' gang. So at this point on, he actually uh, show his uh, scrapbook to class, and he would later be able to um, to discover who Pennywise the Clown is. So they all looked at inside the scrapbook, and this is where we see Pennywise the Clown uh, coming from a moving image. Yeah, he was very flexible too, doing all these flip flops, and that's where we get to spot it. I mean, just when the photograph was in sepia tone, and it ch changes directly the color. I love that because they've been seeing a lot of hallucinations happening too, because they're all afraid. It's part of the fear that they're going for. Yeah, Ben spotted his father. Yeah, Bill spotted uh, Georgie. Uh, Beverly Moore spotted her abusive father. And uh, yeah, Richie spotted uh, the werewolf. <laughs> yeah, Eddie just spotted um, basically uh, Pennywise, but with the uh, uh, there was even a scene where you know he had to take a shower, and then all these these showerhead pipes were just were just uh, 
moving and, and going straight towards him. Like they're just moving in different directions. And you know, before he popped up straight from the 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 drain, the shower drain, and there you go. Uh, but they definitely have their own fears. So they had to stop them by actually using all these uh, those two uh, metals that they they found. So that way they can use it as a weapon. So Beverly Marsh is the one who can shoot it with a slingshot. She she never misses. So this is the best she could do to actually stop Pennywise. Yeah, while um, Bowers and his gang suddenly uh, goes after them. Uh, even Stan got ambushed by them, and but that's where we see the dead lights uh, coming up straight from the the it creature. Uh, they actually took Bowers uh, straight into that tunnel, that one of the the tunnel with holes in it, and this is when he got out of there, and his hair turned white. Yeah, the fright. So this is where um, the game known simply as the loser's gain as as said by you know Bowers's gain or lucky number seven to join in. Uh yeah they, they stopped Pennywise um yeah he did a flip he went all the way straight down into the hole so they thought that they defeated him but then they had to wait thirty years later for him to come back so once he comes they'll finally get to defeat him again. Well, that's what happened in 1990 when all of them had come together. And it goes straight to part two. But other than the Stan, which he committed suicide, uh, yes, uh, only six of them had came together. They, they went to uh, a chop suey uh, Chinese restaurant, you know, just so they can have you know, a dinner for themselves, having those conversations, trying to remember all the good times and the bad times too in their childhood days by while living in, in Derry, Maine. And this is where we begin to see a lot of hallucinations that's happening. Uh, I, I know they, they've been going for a lot of hallucinations. I mean, yes. And there's like too many of them that's going around. Like, for example, when Richie uh, came in, you know, he begins to spot... Pennywise the clown with all these balloons that's being set and has blood over him <laughs> you know, as it pops uh, with every color balloons so he was torturing him he even tortured him when he found out the, the the Paramount Theater that they went to was shut down yeah which I know Richie did uh, dump uh, dump soda on on the bullies just when um, Eddie had accidentally knocked the uh, the popcorn on them while they were watching a a werewolf movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Beverly Marsh uh, went back to her old house where he lives with her father, but her father, of course, died. But then she still began to see all this hallucination, you know, with the blood that's coming directly from the 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 tea cuddle. And, um, and then we begin to see the old lady who's now living there becoming incredibly strange. All of that that's happening. And, uh, of course, um, Bill uh, just went straight to the graveyard uh, just to find uh, Georgie's grave. And yeah, he spotted uh, Pennywise. Yeah, Mike had later uh, bought him his bike, which is silver. Yeah, this is where he... He says, "Hi, ho, silver!" Coming from uh, <laughs> the Lone Ranger. Yeah, he watches that. So they they were all riding together, you know, having fun, and so on. Uh, but yeah, they they were all together. Bill, along with Mike, yeah, Ben, Beverly, uh, Richie, and even Eddie had joined in to the Chinese restaurant. You know, just for. Yeah, you know, just to share all the memories until suddenly they opened the the uh, <laughs> the fortune uh, cookie, and that's where we see a lot of strange uh, things coming out. Like for example, uh, 
the blood spray, the eyeball, uh, the the baby chick, uh, the, the crab legs uh, moving around, all of that. That was like creepy. So now they went straight to the library. They're trying to explain how did all this have happened and how did it connect to it. Well, then they begin to learn on why the people at at Derry, Maine, are not paying attention or anything like that, because of uh, as Beverly has explained it, it's because of of the dairy disease that that the townspeople have gotten, so they couldn't pay attention to what they're after, and uh, also because um, with with all the uh, hallucinations that they're spotting, they they didn't even know anything about that so I guess they were the only ones who spotted it more than anyone else so strange I know um, never explains much but I I mean so they basically begin to figure it out for themselves uh, until suddenly Bowers who, who went to a mental institution and because he was also a murderer uh, he, he suddenly spots um, Pennywise uh, through, the, through the full moon and he wants to grab a knife, and, and this is where we see Pennywise uh, right next to him. And this is where we see the dog, and it was about to go after the uh, the elderly. Yeah, <laughs> kills them. And then now we, we continue to go on with the adventure. So now, they're now going for a lot of hallucinations again. Yeah, Bowers has had escape and just stabs... Uh, Mike until he was being sent to the hospital. Uh, then um, they they all decided to to go back uh, to their old towns, you know, that they're living now. You know, they were packing up to leave the hotel until they decided, uh, well, enough is enough. Let's just end it this way by stopping Pennywise. And maybe the creature that might be underneath of them all. And yes, the creature turned out to be, you guessed it, a giant spider. Which I actually didn't mind the giant spider, which was also in the novel too, but again. Um, so I, I know people had uh, criticized about that, but I thought it was an interesting effect. But I guess what it could have been a lot better if we see Pennywise... Uh, suddenly transforms into the giant spider. I think that would have been interesting. And they should have done that too, in, in the first place. But it all leads to that because now uh, Beverly Marsh had to bring in her slingshot, so that way this time she'll never miss, but she had to miss. All three of them, as you can see in the back of this Blu-ray, they all got blinded by the deadlights that was very bright, coming from the spider. So, um, and this is the sad part too, was when Eddie decided to join in to stop the, the giant spider, but that was too late, and he died just when he was trying to get to the last minute to use uh, his uh, breathing medicine, which he did use uh, as a kid, so everyone has to use it, so, so that way, you know, they, they can survive and try to see if this will work. That this will affect uh, the creature and the clown. This is battery acid! <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he died at the last minute, so Beverly had to uh, join in to stop it. But then um, Bill suddenly spotted uh, Audra, yeah, Olivia Hussey, of course, who's been hypnotized after she went straight to Derry, Maine, just by going to a gas station and she spotted uh, Pennywise the Clown. Yeah, he hypnotized her. Uh, but she was trapped uh, with the rest of the other members by the spider. So they had to kill the spider by taking out the hearts. And that's it. So they saved uh, Audra. They, they took um, Eddie's body. And now, um, well, I think uh, they didn't explain what happened to Eddie after they took his body, but I think they, yeah, they should have had some more explanation. 
It really sucks though that he died because he would have lived. I mean, I would have expected him being knocked out of conscious or something. But what can we do? But I guess he was just taken to a cemetery and he was buried, so he's dead now. While uh, both, um, yeah, while both Ben and Beverly are are now married, so now they don't have to deal with all the problems anymore. Um, you know, Bill is now together with Audra by riding on onto their bikes, so now Audra is no longer hypnotized. Everything's cool, and um, Mike is doing great. Uh, he's recovering from his uh, from his uh, injury that he had when he got stabbed. So that's good. So then the miniseries ends. And, and I enjoyed the miniseries. In fact, I really loved it. I don't care. Everybody has their own opinions. You know, they love the film adaptation of it, as well as the book. Um, fine by me. In fact, I did enjoy the novel too. And I have read it a long time ago. Um, it's a lot different from the miniseries, of course. I mean, I it, I know it's hard to do an adaptation considering how many pages it has. So, chances are, you know, everything's going to be a lot different than one might expect. But the fact is, um, I love the miniseries because at least they had the guts and willing to actually focus on all the the dark and, and creepiness that they went into I mean they sure got away with all this other stuff that they put into it considering you know this is a uh, a TV miniseries and it aired on TV um, they had to take some time to to do so it's kind of hard for kids out there from that particular age to watch it so I, I know that's how everyone felt. Um, I was only five years old when this aired originally. And this was roughly at the time when movies like Jacob's Ladder came out. Which is actually one of the scariest films to come out uh, in the beginning of the 90s. And Home Alone. <laughs> Home Alone was coming out uh, at the same time. So, so by that particular uh, month of November, yes. ABC in my area that I'm part of is KBC TV Los Angeles Channel 7 yeah but I was actually in the Glendale area which ironically enough uh, Channel 7 studio is located there uh, it used to be located in Los Angeles at Prospect Avenue uh, I was in elementary school at the time and along with my brother but my brother went to a different elementary school. I, I was only in, in that one particular elementary school in, in the area. So we're from a distance here. And we were on vacation at the time. So I think I did start to check it out by going straight to uh, part one and then later part two. But I might have missed like, like the first half and maybe the some of the other scenes until later we rented the entire miniseries uh, on home video by my father because my father uh, checked it out uh, he watches it and he loved he did enjoy it um, I enjoyed it too I, I really did love it and it was curious for me to actually uh, buy the, the DVD because I haven't seen it in years and I later watched it several times and I was just happy that at least I bought the, the new Blu-ray, which had a solid transfer. And they got it in full frame and all that, but either way. <laughs> uh, but it could have been a whole lot better if they just uh, restored everything back to its place. But what can you do? I, I love the, uh, the special effects that they use. I mean, everything was all done practically exactly the way it's supposed to be. I mean, keep this in mind, this was 1990. Things were a lot different back then than they are today. Okay? So it had a lot of subtlety, subject matter, all put into place. We get to focus on the characters and how their reactions felt. You know, when they were scared of clowns and all these other creatures that's popping up or the way we're, we're experiencing it. I mean, this is exactly what they're going for. 
the use of blood that's coming directly from the balloons and all these other supernatural effects that they put into it. The creature that's underneath of Pennywise with those sharp teeth and and those uh, sharp uh, fingers and hands. I was like, wow. <laughs> that was really something. Plus, you got a great cast right there. I mean, even by both... Uh, you know, kids and adults. So at least we get to see what they really look like. Even though they look quite different from their appearance. And Tim Curry definitely uh, knocks them right out of the park by giving a fantastic performance as Pennywise the Clown. Because th this is the main reason why this was a good miniseries. In my opinion. And I love uh, John Ritter. You know, I've been a huge fan of him ever since I watched Free's Company, and I always love his uh, his uh, charismatic humor that he goes for, and the fact that he's also uh, <laughs> what he really is. I mean, he's always uh, I always love him when he does all this wacky uh, humor and all this uh, platfalls that he does. It's always cool. But it's great to see him play a different role. Uh, plus Harry Anderson, who's very good uh, in this movie. I mean, considering that he's from Night Court. Uh, Annette O'Toole, very good, very beautiful and sexy. Yes, I'm going to say that. Um, Dennis Christopher, you know, from the movie um, uh, Fade to Black, as well as Breaking Away. The Dennis Quaid film. Um, definitely a powerful performance here. Um, along with Richard Thomas from The Waltons. Yes. Richard Messier, who only gets a small role, sadly, but he was good, nevertheless. Um, you even got Seth Green and, and the late, great Jonathan Brandis. Yeah, he passed away in, in 2003. But he was also good, too. I mean, this was his starting point before he went on to do the film The Never-Ending Story, uh, the next chapter. That was a sequel. Went on to play uh, Bastion a after uh, Barry at Oliver. Uh, yeah, Olivia Hussey was also very good, too. Um, yeah, coming from Black Christmas and and Romeo and Juliet come to mind. Uh, has a great cast. I mean, I thought they did a great job with their performances. Uh, nevertheless, and I love the cinematography. I love the editing. Well, not the sh shortest uh, edits that they had to put up with, but that's okay. And I thought the script was fine coming from Lawrence F. Cohen and Tom Lee Wallace. So they did a good job. Tom Lee Wallace uh, did a fine job directing this. And I love the score done by Richard Bells. Um, he won a Primetime Emmy Award for that. Uh, with the eerie uh, opening and uh, until the, uh, the sort of a beautiful uh, circus-like uh, score that they went into at the end. Uh, which is also in the middle of it. But hey, that's what it is. And... I just love everything about it. Uh, so, despite of the fact that yes, it did have its flaws. I mean, the ending was pretty weak. They could have done so much better without that. But they could have added some more to the story that they left behind. But I know it wouldn't be easy because they, because then ABC will probably have a hard time, you know, selling it. Um, especially that deals with pedophilia and all that. But hey, this is from the network that gave us Twin Peaks. So, <laughs> so they had a hard time trying to sell that, uh, even though they only had two seasons. But that's how they went for it. But I really enjoyed it. So it has a great cast, great location, uh, great setting, amazing, uh, amazing special effects, all of that. So I enjoyed it. Um, so there you go. So that's Stephen King's It, and I give it four stars. I'm Joseph Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.